So not only is The Amazing Digital Circus Episode 3 coming to YouTube on October 4th, but it is also coming to Netflix. This is one of the biggest, best things that could happen for indie animation. So let's talk about that. Hi there, everyone. Lars here from Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. Now, I've already seen a lot of people coming out about this particular announcement, and weirdly enough, coming at it with a very doom and gloom angle. You have those who are saying, this is obviously the reason why Murder Drones was cancelled early. No, Murder Drones was only ever billed as a one-season show. That was done by Liam Vickers, and he did what he set out to do. Good on Liam, he needs his rest. The other thing that I see a lot of people saying is that, this is the end of Western animation as we know it. And maybe, but I wouldn't go that far just yet. Instead, I feel like this is opening up the doors for so many other creators to have a chance to succeed. Because if The Amazing Digital Circus, for instance, does well on Netflix, then what if Lackadaisy gets on there next? What if Satina gets on there next? And then that opens up the doors for so many other incredible creators and their stories. What if Olin Rogers gets a chance to come back onto the scene and tell yet another great story? So before I get too far ahead of myself, let's address what's going on here. Glitch has really begun to spread their wings. With all of the massive success that came to them thanks to the amazing Digital Circus Pilot and Candy Carrier Chaos, as well as a fairly strong roundup for murder drones, they are rolling in the dough. I've talked about this before, just based on views alone. The company has been making hundreds of thousands of dollars, which they've been able to put right back into their production. Plus, thanks to all of the merchandise which they have sold in the tens of thousands of units, they are able to hire on more people and expand their production, tell tons of different stories. They are getting ready to do the Gaslight District, which is going to be awesome, and you can tell how much love and care they put into Murder Drones, as well as what they are putting into the amazing Digital Circuit. This is still an indie operation, but now they are effectively coming into the new age much like the Disney company did, and while it might be a little too grandiose to quite compare this to the Snow White and the Seven Dwarves coming onto the scene and taking the world by storm, I think that there is a bit of a comparison here because you have an indie animation company from Australia coming onto Netflix with their best show in terms of numbers and popularity, and it is going to have a debut before the entire entertainment industry. This is something that they can no longer ignore. No longer will the hundreds of millions of views and all of that money, which Hollywood does not have, finally it will be thrown in their faces on a platform that they cannot escape from. If The Amazing Digital Circus Episode 3 does very well, not only will this be pleasing to all of the millions of fans out there for the show, but it will also bring in many more viewers from all over the world who have not heard about this before, who are going to be like, wow! Holy cow, what is this amazing thing? Netflix has a chance to reach people in ways that YouTube just doesn't. There's so many things on YouTube that it's impossible to see all of the amazing and cool stuff that is being created by all of these different creators. By being put onto a pedestal on Netflix, even though it's kind of hard for some of us to conceive of a world where people have not seen the amazing digital circus yet, it will be able to reach more people, and it happens during spooky month as well with a proper spooky episode, which looks like will be a little bit reminiscent of Murder Drones' episode 5, Home, which might even then pull more people to come and check out Murder Drones, which will be fantastic for the Murder Drones community. This could pump in even more life into it, even after it's ended. There's only really good things that can happen from here, so long as the third episode does well and based on the teaser trailer alone it seems like we really don't have too much to fear on that particular uh, route avenue of thinking now then let's start really thinking about this if the mainstream 
industry, news, entertainment, publishers, and all of those people finally see that this indie project, The Amazing Digital Circus, with its hundreds of millions of views, tens of millions of hardcore fans, now makes an absolute splash on Netflix. They will no longer be able to ignore the power of indie animation, of indie creators and storytellers, who, with some skill and some luck, are able to take stories that Hollywood refuses to make and that publishers refuse to, to adapt and to publish, well, those stories are wanted, they are loved, they have a place and that there is a massive audience for that. Furthermore, Hollywood, and to a certain extent, most publishing companies do not believe that they can reach uh, the viewership between 18 years old and 30 years old. They see that as a black hole and that no one within those 12 years of life really want to consume stories or that they have the capital, the money, to afford buying these stories and all the merchandise that come with them. Glitch has been proving them wrong, though, time and time again. And with this being on Netflix, this could really finally give Hollywood the slap in the face that it needs to let them know this is pretty much the way of the future. Indie creators have now saturated all corners of the internet and in other markets that have allowed them to get their voices heard. More and more independently created stories are cropping up every single day. Now, not as many of them have anywhere near the kind of success that The Amazing Digital Circus has had. However, as Luke and Kevin have said repeatedly, when one goes up, everyone else comes with it. As they help to raise the sea, it raises the possibilities for all of these other indie creators. Because Glitch has already been working with, for instance, uh, Lackadaisy, this means that more people are going to have their eyes drawn to Lackadaisy. As more people look to Lackadaisy, they'll see, wow, 2D animation is still very much alive and well, and that there are great stories that can be told. This then will get other people thinking, what other amazing stories are there out there? I didn't know I had avenues to all of these amazing other venues, to all these amazing other stories, all these shows. I gotta go check it out. And while it will not immediately cause an avalanche that will benefit all these other independent creators, it will get the ball rolling. And because they are able to do fantastic stories on a shoestring budget as compared to all of the billions of dollars that Hollywood throws at shows that continuously fail, uh, what this means is that independent creators will then be tempted to take on projects for streaming services like Netflix to create these shows at a nice price. Now then, this does open up the doors for all the other kinds of worries for how big studios can try to get their feet into the door of independent studios, corrupt them and take them over, or for people's stories to be stolen from them. And those are issues that we will have to deal with as they come down the pipeline. And one of the great things is, is that because, well, it's kind of sad to say this, this is a great thing, but because so many animators have been abused, have been fired, and are now just kind of out there in the wind, they have the experience of what the industry can actually do, and that experience can now be passed on to these indie creators, to these independent studios. They can be hired on to then help them avoid the pitfalls that Hollywood will greedily throw in their way, because I guarantee that if The Amazing Digital Circus can make a massive splash on Netflix, that many big studios, Disney being probably the first, will not take kindly to what these guys in Australia are doing, and they will take measures to try to destroy them. Believe you me, it's going to happen. This is actually something that I thought was going to occur probably by the end of the decade, but no, it's happening right now. As of 2024, indie animation, indie storytelling has its chance to go head to head with Hollywood, not just here on YouTube, but on a streaming platform, on Netflix of all places. And there we will see what happens when horns are locked. If there's anything that this humble novice author and YouTuber can ask you to do, it would be this, that on October 4th, that you watch and enjoy the heck out of the Amazing Digital Circus episode three, and if you have a Netflix account, head on over to Netflix and watch the third episode. In fact, watch all three episodes back to back and put in those fantastic 
put in those fantastic watch minutes. Now then, granted, this would seem to artificially balloon what is going to happen, but let's just see what happens here. Because again, if the Amazing Digital Circus begins to chart on things like Nielsen, when people do not expect indie animators to crank out anything good, this will cause a firestorm. Not only a firestorm within the industry, but here on YouTube. There are going to be so many people who are going to come out of the woodworks and be like, I don't believe that this thing is really any good. What is this garbage? You know, this is just a flash in the pan. Oh no, this is more than just a flash in the pan. This is the beginning. As I've said many times before, and I'll say it again, by the end of this decade, the entertainment industry is going to look very different. And indie creators like myself and like Glitch Studios, probably even more so than me, will have the opportunity to completely change the game and tell stories that people believed could never be told before. I'm really excited for this. I'm really excited to see how this benefits so many other creators. I really think that even though Liam is done with Murder Drones, this will be a big boon to him. This will be a big boon to Gooseworks. This will be amazing for so many other creators out there. So let's support the Amazing Digital Circus as it makes its transition on over to Netflix. And let's get ready for some big fun, some big surprises, and some big changes ahead. Because the future is ours. So with all that being said, if you'd like to support this independent creator and the works that he has made and the stories that he has told, then please check out the books that I've published. Links for them are in the description below. I highly recommend if you enjoy the zaniness of The Amazing Digital Circus that you will either enjoy uh, my book, The Monarch Mercenaries, Autonomy, or Notice Me, Send a Pie, or if you're really interested in an absolutely awful but yet still hilarious story, Sandwich Desperados. Again, links for them are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us on this incredible adventure that we call riding. And until that exciting time of October 4th, <laughs> choose.